Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Urban Legends video. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll go and we'll start the whole new series here based on your suggestions. I'm gonna do these throughout the rest of the week and then probably wrap up by the next Sunday or so. So be on the lookout for more videos. And please keep those suggestions coming. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a few new ones here and then go into the uh, archives, some of the past suggestions as well, such as this one. This one was suggested very early on uh, when I was doing my videos and the only reason I haven't talked about it is because I haven't really found a source that had as much information as possible. I was almost going to make it part of like a mixtape of sorts but then when I found this source and all the information inside it this was really good stuff so I wanted to go ahead and isolate it into its own video. Pretty popular urban legend there in the United Kingdom. Um, it's It's been going on for quite some time since the early 1900s with the last known incident being just a couple of years back so who knows if it's still ongoing to this day. And what I'm talking about is the urban legend known as the Hairy Hands, although it also goes by several other names. It can also be called the Hairy Hands of Dartmoor, and in some cases it's called the Hairy Hands of Dartmoor Road. And it's pretty fascinating stuff. Um, I don't know what these things are. I'm going to present all the angles, all the theories that people have as to what this particular entity is. But whatever it is, it has been haunting the roads of... Dartmoor Road for a good number of years. In fact, probably the first known instance, you have to go back to 1910, so a good while back to give you an idea. So, real quickly, what are the hairy hands? Basically, they're your average male hands that have that have a whole bunch of hair on them. They may even be animalistic. Um, it's kind of hard to peg because so many people that have encountered these entities, they are so frightened in their lives during that encounter that they're not really paying too much attention but the most common theme seems to be that they are hairy man-like hands and they're found in Dartmoor Road which is a road located there in Devon England near uh, in the United Kingdom and it's a long isolated road um, I saw some pictures that I, and I'm gonna showcase them here throughout the video think of like your average local backwood type road just in almost endless just stretching from one farmland to another and so with everything being so isolated the people and uh, that drive down this road they're probably driving down and they're probably the only car every hour or so they are the ones that have experienced this strange entity so here's what it is um, the earliest known instance seems to be in the early 1900s in fact the year seems to be 1910 as the as the story where stuff began occurring there was descriptions of people driving and then experiencing something they called it a strange phenomenon it seemed to be some kind of entity of some sort that would suddenly have control over their car or in some cases over their motorcycle and how the incidences occurred I don't know when they began exactly I don't know but they began sometime in the early 1900s and if but for the fact they were pretty much seen as a nuisance they weren't considered very very serious things took a different turn though back in 1921 because what had happened was this again for a couple of decades now, from the early 1900s to around 1921, the people that were encountering these hairy hands described them as having something involving these hands either being felt or actually being seen in some cases. They would grab the control wheel of the vehicle at that point. It could be like a motorcycle or it could be, again, a car. And it would grab them and the person in the vehicle would struggle as much as they can to try to force off the hands because if they didn't then the actual hands themselves were trying to make the vehicle or the motorcycle turn straight off the road and violently crash and up until that point up until 1921 anything involving these encounters they were relatively I guess not deadly because nothing involving actual accidents to the point of someone being killed actually occurred 
but again, the turning point was 1921. In June 1921, there was a guy by the name of Dr. E. H. Helby, who was a medical officer for the local Dartmoor prison. He was going down the road, that very same road that everyone else had encountered, this strange urban legend of sorts and he was driving there when his motorcycle which had an adjoining sidecar it's one of those deals where you've seen them in the old time movies where it's the guy on the motorcycle and then right next to the motorcycle there's that little tiny almost bumper car of sorts that can house some passengers well he had some passengers and those were his two children and I don't know if this occurred during the day or during the night, but when he was driving down that road with his two children, that's when all of a sudden the car, I'm sorry, the motorcycle lost control. It was so much so that the children, who later recounted the tale, said that the doctor knew something bad was going to happen. He was struggling against something, or he certainly knew that he was not going to be able to stop the upcoming crash so he told his children to jump to safety right before the accident occurred they did they jumped out and they prevented them from being killed but it was too late for the doctor the accident happened he was thrown out of the seat of his motorcycle and he apparently died instantaneously from a broken neck now the children were not able to make any mention of hairy hands or any kind of hands possessing the control because as being the only witnesses, whatever had occurred between the entity and this doctor, it pretty much only stayed with the doctor, and he, of course, ended up dying. So if they if, if they encountered something along those lines, they didn't say it, but people have attributed this accident to being the very first deadly accident happening in that road. Now, cut to a couple months later, August 26, that very same year, 1921, a second encounter happened that was almost as deadly. It wasn't actual death, but it was pretty, pretty close. There was a young captain of the British Army who also was riding around his motorcycle. He was the one that um, pretty much catapulted this urban legend to an almost global status because after his encounter, the local media got in on this and in turn the national media gone in on this and then that's when this story took on a whole other level so here's what he said he had a crash and then when he was being interviewed this is what he responded to any of the media that were questioning he said it was not my fault believe it or not something drove me off the road a pair of hairy hands closed over mine i felt them as plainly as ever i felt anything in my life large muscular hairy hands i fought them for all i was worth but they were too strong for me they forced the machine into the turf at the edge of the road and i knew no more till i came to myself lying a few feet away on my face on the turf so no doubt when the local media got a hold of this they immediately I mean, this was front page news, and then when the national media in turn and the global media got on it, that's when they started reporting and focusing real clearly on the hairy hands, because that's when the hairy hands um, urban legend really took off. I think it was before that some of the other incidences, people didn't really describe the hands as being hairy, but here, with him being essentially the, the catalyst of, of things being catapulted to the status that they are today, it's pretty much stuck. Everything afterward has always been about hairy hands um, having some kind of death grip on the control wheels. Um, cut to a couple of years later, 1924, another uh, attack took place. This was for, on a person, a folklorist named Theo Brown, and this was an interesting turn because here, instead of actually an encounter and happening on the road itself, it happened while this lady, Theo Brown, was vacationing there in that area. She said that she was sleeping with her husband in a caravan. I think they were there, like, visiting some kind of family of some sort. And one night, that's when she said something very peculiar happened. Um, apparently, I think she was more of like a... Um, psychic of some sort because she could sense a bunch of things but here's what she said she said that she sensed that there was some power very seriously menacing nearby this was that night that this was happening and enough so that she was instantly like paying attention to her surroundings to making sure you know what was going on and inside the caravan she looked out of the small window and that's when she saw this she saw something stare like right at the window 
that look like the fingers and palm of a very large hand with many hairs on the joints and the back of itself. And then on top of that, it was slowly, almost like straight from a horror movie, it was pulling itself up towards the bottom of the, from the bottom of the window to the open part of the window. I guess they had it open at night so that way they could let the cool air breeze. And slowly but surely this thing was tiptoeing uh, straight up to the open part of the window. Uh, knowing that she, if she didn't do anything that t could stop this, then it was going to be bad news. Um, she wanted this thing gone, so what she did was she made an immediate sign of the cross. And she said she did this because she prayed very much that we might be kept safe. Those were her words. And when this happened, then this hairy hand seemed to recoil. And then it began to drop out, like it actually descended out of view from the window, and then that was it. She said the sense of feeling of something, again, being menacing um, dissipated, and it was no longer around her, and then that was it. She never had any other encounter, despite the fact that she stayed there for several more weeks. She never had any other encounter that was involving these hairy hands later on. Very interesting, again the fact that this encounter was not on the road itself like so many other people have had but know that this was actually inside a home itself another encounter occurred with a writer by the name of Michael Williams he was a journalist um, oh I'm sorry it was a journalist uh, that had encountered this um, a guy by the name of Rufus Endel but it was chronicled by someone named Michael Williams Rufus told Michael he said that he encountered the hairy hands while he was driving down that very same road and this is the way he described it he said a pair of hands gripped my driving wheel and then I had to fight for control he actually managed though to successfully fight off the hands and so he avoided the crash but yet yeah, th there is another instance regarding this cut to a couple decades later 1961 there was another incidence this one by a woman by the name of Mrs. E. Abadiscombe and this is what she described uh, she said a young man undertook to run into Princeton on his motorcycle to get something for his landlady in about an hour he returned to Penley very white and shaken and saying he had a, a curious experience he said he felt his hands gripped by two rough and hairy hands and every effort made to throw him off his machine that was it uh, I think actually uh, Miss Mrs. E. Batiscombe had this experience told her by that young man and then she in turn told that guy uh, uh, Mr. Brown about the incident itself um, finally let me go ahead and I'll cut back uh, a couple decades and then go towards the end this was in 2008 so this is the last known incident unless I could be wrong but there could be another uh, experience altogether there was someone that was there in Britain um, he was actually a seller of some sort um, he sold it looks like uh, uh, supplies of photocopy machines and so he was there as a salesman to try to go around the area and see what he could book as clients he did one he actually had a client that wanted to get things done and so the date was January 16th 2008 the guy's name was Michael he was driving down that very same road this time it was at night 11 p.m. Uh, back I guess to his other home uh, from the successful sale and when that had happened um, he said that there was something that really strange I mean it happened inside his car just like the other person me uh, mentioning earlier that there was something menacing that feeling of something menacing happening around him he said he began to feel cold and clammy like his skin actually started to feel cold and it started to go numb he actually thought that for a while there he was gonna have a stroke because that usual sensation um, especially if it's on the left side of someone is whenever they're having a stroke that that they that their body starts to turn numb before the stroke occurs not so in this case um, in fact this was something much much worse and so what he said was um, as this was happening he also started to feel a presence like it was very oppressive and also very very evil 
And as he was driving, he heard about this legend, and he was thinking to himself, could this be it? Could these be the hairy hands themselves? And sure enough, they were, because this is what he said. He said that these hu a huge pair of hairy hands, or paws, as he described them, suddenly clamped themselves over his own hands. And he, they did this as he was staring in horror, obviously you know, thinking to himself, how can this be happening? And sure enough, these hands yet again tried to throw his car straight off the road and then into some dark embankment. Obviously, it would result in a big crash and that would be it. Um, he would most likely not survive. He said the hands tried this once and he fought it off, tried it twice, he fought them off, and then he tried it three times. And uh, finally, he was able to try them uh, like to essentially stop them three times altogether and this is a unique term apparently the hands got tired of this um, either they got tired of the struggle or they decided that it was not worth it and so the hands disappeared and the way they disappeared was he recalled there being a huge flash of light so much so that it completely illuminated illuminated the inside of his car and then on top of that when the flash stopped and it was darkness yet again um, he smelled a very strong odor of sulfur interesting no we've heard about that about about anything involving sulfur being denoting something else really really evil so he sped up he didn't want to stop anywhere else he just got back home as quickly as he could and then he began telling his encounter to others around him so yet yeah, that is as of right now the er the latest known instance 2008 with regarding uh the hairy hands but again if someone has something else uh, that they would like to share other later encounters obviously going into 2015 that would be very fascinating to hear. I'm all for it. Now, as far as the origins of the hairy hands, um, I've talked about it early in the video. I'm going to try to give as many avenues as possible as to what these hairy hands could be. Um, there are so many, um, and, it's, and this thing still remains so mysterious that everything is literally up in the air, no pun intended, as to what these origins are. So here they go. Um, some people believe that these hairy hands actually belong to gremlins, like the actual gremlins that uh, for a while there, like in the early World War One, World War Two era, people believed would cause malfunctions in airplanes but these are like a variant of those gremlins instead of causing disasters up in the air they were in turn um, trying to make sure that they could cause these mischievous disasters on the road in cars themselves I don't know I think it's a bit of a stretch on this um, because traditionally the idea of something involving gremlins it seems to be far more physical than the spirit like nature that these hairy hands are because the way that the story stories are of these hairy hands people either see them or don't see them and then the ones that do see them they seem to be almost an impression that I got is that they're transparent like that key word where they it clamps onto the person's hands it's almost like the person can see the hands but can see through them and see like what's happening at the same time so I, I don't know about the gremlin deal others have mentioned that it could be actually another variation of of what of of a cryptid known in and around that area it's called the kelpie i've heard of that kelpie before i thought about doing a uh, cryptid and monsters video on it before it was suggested by others i don't know I, I just never got around to it because to me the idea of a kelpie and it seems like the main thesis seems to be it's like a a bad horse of some sort um, I could be wrong. I mean, it's obviously it's, it's a shape-shifting spirit, but the main thesis seems to be again that it's like a horse that pulls people into the water. I I don't know. It just seems unique. Uh, so I may do it yet again, but that's anything involving another theory, another avenue as to what these hairy hands are is that it's a variation of this Kelpie. Since it can shapeshift into anything, instead of drawing people into a river, it in turn tries to draw people into the side of the road. And what better way to do it than to force someone off the road through the possession of their hands. So that's another avenue. Um, finally, an, uh, an actual, I guess, ghost-like avenue has to do with the usual thing involving uh, someone dying and then coming back to haunt that area. And here's what the local story goes. Um, apparently, back in the early 1900s, late 1800s even, 
there was a whole bunch of gunpowder mills that frequented that area. I mean, the, uh, Dartmoor, I guess it was a place where it was a uh, highly successful business when it came to creating gunpowder. And so there were a bunch of mills that popped around. And being the late 1800s, early 1900s, the conditions were not exactly safe. Um, anything involving employment safety it just wasn't high on the list because when you're dealing with something as very dangerous as gunpowder and then you're dealing with unsafe conditions that just pretty much leads to a natural conclusion where accidents big accidents will, attempt, will happen and that's what occurred in this case the employees of a local gunsmith were told um, you know don't wear any steel booted like steel toed boots because any sparks coming from the steel from the edge of the of the steel of the boot itself could ignite everything and so that's why they always wore soft toed shoes um, um, which made sense because you don't want anything to go off but there was a blacksmith that was there who followed this rule yet one night got really drunk in a bar had his steel toed shoes on forgot to take them off as he was going back to the shop and when he did so sure enough he hit some kind of edge I don't know if it was metallic or if it was uh, something rock like but it was enough to create a spark off of that steel portion and because there was a lot of gunpowder around it blew his area up so much so that when people found his body the only bo the only parts of the body that is fat was his big hairy hands apparently he was, a, he was a big hairy guy and that was the only part of his body that was found so if you're going with that aspect or that avenue then that seems to be the most common theory um, it, 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 I don't know it seems to I guess um, it seems too easy to link. It's one of those things where um, when you, whenever anything involving a local haunted area, uh, there's always going to be a local tale that easily ties into it. And I think this one does so, but who knows? It, it could be the actual thing itself. The last theory, and this is the one I tend to believe in more, is that it's physical. And not physical in the sense of the hairy hands, but instead it's physical in the sense of the roads themselves you're looking at some pictures now of this road um, this road is actually very very curvy it's isolated uh, but imagine driving at night and you're going up a hill and then right across that hill where you normally wouldn't see a second before over it now that you're over it there's a sharp a sharp turn so imagine if people are driving let's say in this unfamiliar road they're driving faster than they should be because it seems like a lot of the people that encountered you know, these hairy hands or had, almost had accidents had to do with the fact that they were um, out of towners imagine if you come across this hill then you're all of a sudden fighting for control of the vehicle as you're coming across that very sharp turn and I think that's more than likely what occurs in many of the other instances the term is called camber uh, there it's, it's it's another word for curvy roads and when you're dealing with these long isolated roads you it's it creates a false sense of perception you're thinking to yourself okay that the the once I reach the crest of that hill and go across it then it's just gonna be uh, it's more of the same and so you get into a false sense of security but sure enough when you go across that hill bam all of a sudden there's a sharp curve and then it's too late and I think that's what might have happened in most of those instances I mean looking at these pictures you'll see where such things have seem like that because there's a little spots little pock marks of hills here and there and the road disappears but obviously you'll see another part of the road of it later on in the distance you just can't see that middle part and that's where the road could be a sharp turn all of a sudden and then that's where things could get really deadly really fast and maybe with the uh, the way the cars were set up back then in the early 1900s they didn't have the ability for the cars to I guess have better handling especially when there's something that's 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 suddenly an emergency like if you're trying to stop the car from crashing so I think that makes more sense to me and I think that's what probably happened in this case in a lot of those cases but who knows um, I could be completely wrong it could be some of the other stuff all of this stuff is still up for debate because again so many of these instances remain mysterious so so what do you guys think the hairy hands of Dartmoor Road if anyone has again any more information especially on the more recent attacks um, I would love to hear it here no physical proof unfortunately no 
actual um, video footage or anything like that of these hairy hands. Um, if, if they're still around, who knows? Um, there's bound to be people that have encountered them. So it'll be interesting to see any more information on this. So, All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.